meeting in three years, it's exciting. Um, so we will start off with instructions on how to make public comments, which we've been on Zoom for so long. Uh, at points in the meeting, when the meeting chair requests are complete, public comment members of public shall interview desire to speak. Um, all public comments shall be addressed to the board of directors and limited to a three-minute speak per speaker. And since we had the clock on Zoom, we decided to give clock to keep us honest. And the board of directors may choose to respond to comments or request um, um, staff to respond to the conclusion of all the public comment period. All right, so I guess we're going to call order. Board President Wilson. I'm here. Director Pace. Here. Director Capetti. Here. Director Ruggieri. Here. Director Shea. Present. Thank you. All right. Um, so usually the agenda is a quick thing, but we're going to actually, and ask everybody if it's okay, we've got something here to give a presentation on our financial audit, and so we're going to actually move that to the board in September, um, as long as that is okay. I'm, I'm only here for a short period of time. I do my public comment before. I'm uh, going to be safe for her. You are? I'm not. Okay, I, I, I'll watch you on tape. Okay. <laughs> Eric, are you okay? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Um, we're going to move the public comments to the board of September, and then we're going to do a from Michelle, um, and then the Michelle. So, do you have those minutes? Yeah. So, can we adopt the agenda with those changes? Sure. Okay. All right, then. So, go ahead, Stephen. Uh, we're going to do public comments. Yes. Go ahead, time for item nine. Yes, go see you all. It's brilliant. Um, so, uh, I want you to think, imagine something. You're on a world trip, and you rented out your house, and you're going to leave for three years, and your house is in the hands of a property manager. And you have a wonderful time on your trip, and you come back, and lo and behold, you come and you look at your backyard, and there is a uh, wall in the backyard, and you built a wall in the back, and you ask the property manager, what's this about? And say, well, you're a nice neighbor that you like so much, um, built a wall, and uh, he paid for everything, don't worry about it, my work and took care of it, it's fine. And uh, well, basically that's the situation we have now on Quietwood, and uh, behind the, uh, I, I really don't want to identify the house, you know the house I'm talking about. Um, it's outrageous, uh, it is a breach of trust, it's a, it violates our property rights, it's going to create problems uh, having that intrusion on our property, even though uh, uh, the uh, people paid for it themselves, they paid our workmen, so there was an inducement, it is completely wrong and it's a legal situation and needs to be addressed immediately. That's issue number one. Issue number two, and I'm going to be very brief tonight, uh, is the uh, ongoing issue with uh, the binge drinking parties uh, in the park. Uh, not everyone is a binge drinker, I've seen one, one uh, attendee now, he never drinks, but it happens, and I, this past uh, Friday I was there, I saw the guys, they were whooping it up, doing what they normally do, and I said, said to them, in very direct terms, that I thought their behavior was completely immature for middle-aged guys. They got wrapped like 15-year-old drinking in the park, and essentially the behavior is just completely wrong. We do prohibit it in this park. I did call the police afterwards. Oh, it, it, I want to backtrack a little bit. After a few words, some guy came up to me, and Bill knows who he is, I don't know who he is. He said, you better apologize to me. I said, who are you? You better apologize. He kept on asking. And I said, no, I'm not you know. And I backed off and they said, where do you live? Where do you live? Where do you live? Where do you live? Well, they know where I live. It was intimidation. It was bullying. It was, and the reason I bring this up is that this is the kind of mentality we're dealing with back there. This needs to stop. I have a few more things to say about this. I did call the police and I can tell you about uh, that interaction if you like. Would you like to hear this? This um, part of the story? I, I think that maybe we can take this not during the meeting and then I can have a question about this later. Is that okay with you? Uh, well, I think. You've got five board members. I'm going to be less than a minute if you, if you really want to shut down the, the discussion now. But I did want to tell you, the, the police officer came and he said, you know, there's no open container laws. I can't do an darn thing. I said, well, what are you talking about? No open container laws in unincorporated area. I said, well, what do you mean? And he says, well, they have to be falling down drunk before we arrest them. I said, okay, let me ask you this. They kick people out of the dance park all the time for having drinking parties. And guess where they come? They come right here to Marinewood. Are you saying that Marinewood is the only place in the North Bay where you can have drinking parties? I want you to think about this. I want you to look at this. Hey, I know that guy, I know that guy. I want you to look at this from a, a, a public interest standpoint. These guys have alternatives. They can go to, to the people's backyards. They don't have to do it in our park. It's against park rules. Every single park in the North Bay, in fact, all across the country, prohibits this kind of behavior. So, if you want to, if you want to just look the other way on that, you're responsible for anyone who comes over here to, to do drinking. And by the way, the people that get kicked out in McGinnis, they happen to be Latino. And why are the Latinos treated so much differently than white people? Okay. Over, over, over. Thank you for your comment. Over. Okay. This is your response. Both of these things are. Okay. All right, I guess but you, you didn't speak over me. I'm just going to no, make comments. I let you speak. Okay. We are now going to move on. Fair enough. To listen to Michelle. The issue doesn't go away. Our financial year 2021, 2022. Thank you, John. All right. Thank you, Michelle. 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 Thank you, Michel
uh, changes in uh, that the revenue and expense activities for the fiscal year for government activity. And so at the bottom of each uh, total change in that position, there's a positive amount of one million five hundred twenty-five thousand eight hundred nineteen dollars, which is a huge, uh, which is a great change compared to the last year's deficit amount of one million three hundred fifty thousand dollars, uh, and that nine hundred thirty dollars. So let's go ahead and look at the next page. So here we have our government's fund balance sheet. Um, this is prepared on a modified rule based accounting, which includes both cash basis as well as pro basis. And over here you see that uh, this fund balance lists out the total assets liabilities and changes in fund balance for the two major funds, which, is, which are this general fund and the measure A fund. And at the bottom you'll see the change in fund balance for general fund is seven million one hundred ninety thousand dollars and four hundred twenty dollars, and for measure A is sixty seven thousand three hundred ninety dollars. So again, these amounts represent the total assets plus the total liabilities. So we'll go ahead and go to the next page. <laughs> so here we have statement of revenues, expenditure, and changes in fund balance of government fund. Again, it just <laughs> outlines changes in revenues and expenditure for, the, for both the general fund and measure A fund. So at the bottom, you see the changes in general fund. We have a net, net positive fund balance of $1,140,211, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, and for measure A fund, there's a deficit amount of $217,281. Uh, so let's go ahead and go to the last page. So some key, key things to the manager report. Um, there were no significant change in accounting policies. All accounting estimates were appropriate. All audit adjustments were corrected by management. Um, there were no disagreements with management during the audit. We didn't encounter any kind of difficulties during the audit. There is one current observation, which is the new GAPC 87 accounting standard, which we have to start implementing in the future. So basically, what it is is that we want the district to come with to come up with a capital capitalization policy of any lease assets that, that they have of over thirty thousand dollars over. So any lease assets including like rental vehicle, office spaces, um, coffee machines, anything like that, we have to start. Um, that we have to capitalize those these assets on the report going forward. So some some things to keep in mind. Um, this might give a special thanks to Tiffany and Ari for all, all their help during the audit. So you know they made the whole process very easy and very uh, smooth. So thanks, sir. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, a couple of the kind of key things to note on here, uh, in my opinion, if you look on the third to last page, which is the statement of revenues, expenditures, so on and so forth. Uh, it's like, it's this one. Take a lot. Sorry, I'll take a lot. It's a case government funds take a lot. Right. Uh, oh, yeah, government funds. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, if you go down about two thirds of the way, you see what's in excess, um, parentheses, deficiency of revenues over under expenditures, and that number is 490,211. So, what that number represents, uh, essentially just from operating within our uh, general fund, is that is our revenue over expenditures for the year before you take into account the $650,000 loan that we took. In. So, if we never took in that loan, but we still did all the work that was associated with that loan, which we did, we still would have finished $490,000 in the back. Uh, with the loan, obviously, I thought our total change in fund balance is the 1.14 million because you're adding the 650 cents. I, I want to point that out. I, I, again, the reading of the loan was a great idea, especially for the rate that we got it at, uh, because that rate is quadrupled uh, at this <laughs> yes. point in time. But uh, just back to the point I was trying to make at the beginning when, we were, when you all approved that project, was we could afford it. And at the end of the day, even without the money, we still finished 500,000 ahead, uh, which is good. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out uh, is when you look at the page that says page 8, statement of activities, mm -hmm. and the total net position, uh, hey, I, I certainly want to point out that this is the first time since 1968 was implemented that we had positive net position, um, and quite possibly before that, 1968 is what caused us to put all of our long-term uh, pension liabilities on the balance sheet, recognized within our audit financials, which obviously added several million dollars worth of debt uh, to it. Uh, another reason for the big swing here, too, is that for the year that was measured, CalPERS performed very well, which brought down long-term liabilities. So the chances of this going back into negative next year when they measure the year that just recently finished, uh, where they had a negative 6% return or something along those lines, uh, is going to cause a big swing here, too. So this is taking a, a lot of numbers into account, like what's digital in that position. Some of those numbers are 30-year actuarial liabilities. Uh, that said, to be in a positive position at the end of this year is certainly an accomplishment, considering where it was you know, four years ago. Great. Thank you, Director. Uh, yeah, if there's any other questions, uh, I'm happy to Does the board have any questions about anything else you could add to Michelle or Jeff? Uh, the only other thing I would state is um, the observation about the new GASB uh, Rule 87, which causes capitalization of lease assets. The only thing that we would have that would apply here is the coffee machine. Uh, this is very new. Uh, Michael and his team, uh, they didn't have samples from other agencies because other agencies haven't adopted this yet. This kind of just got implemented this year. Uh, I will poke around um, via CSDA and other things and see if we can get hold of a couple samples. Uh, and a lot of talk on hearings are looking at a capitalization policy that excludes minor things like a coffee machine from having to You've got to start capitalizing that, and so lease becomes hard. Uh, it's a lot of work for what is ultimately part of you know, the rented asset. Uh, this isn't, we don't have a rental fleet of vehicles or anything along those lines. It's something that we pay a few thousand dollars a year for. Right? But so, yeah, I'll also reach out to them to see if they have examples from other public agencies that they released it. So, wasn't it thousand dollars or more? Yes, but the tricky part is what else are we going to release? So, so when you look at it over and over, right, so it also might just mean reworking instead of doing five-year terms, doing three-year terms or four-year terms, if they would do it. Uh, so we'll figure it out. And 30000 was a benchmark. I'll also want to look and see what our reasonable benchmark is. Is 35000 a reasonable benchmark? Uh, so on and so forth. Because given our current lease or our company machine, we're actually going to write around that 30000 lifetime lease number four. Okay. Right, but there's also ways around that. We pay higher lease because we pay very low, we have very high thresholds for printing. So all the printing is included in the lease until we cross a certain threshold. We used to have a very expensive lease, but we paid a lot for every page we printed over a certain amount, and we would always fall asleep. So our lease payments are higher, but our overall payments are much lower than what they used to be. So there's, we'll just have to look at it and, uh, and draw up a lease agreement that makes sense. All right, that's awesome. Yeah, we'll bring this up. Uh, this, this is our rush. We'll be yeah. the next meeting, uh, but we'll certainly put one voice ideally by the end of this fiscal year. I'm not sure to do that. Okay, perfect. All right, I don't have any questions, so. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. Can I ask for a formality then? Somebody just make a motion and second to accept the audit management report is presented, uh, and then I'll get a non-draft copy uh, from Michelle. We'll put them on our website, and I'll get a couple other people who are waiting on to. Okay. Okay. Can I motion? Can I motion? You can. Okay, I motion to accept the audit from Michelle for the 2021 2022 uh, financial statement. I'll say that. Board President Olson. Director Gates. Aye. Director Cocaine. Aye. Director Ruggieri. Aye. Director Shea. Aye. Thank you so much. Should we have heard from the public? Okay. We're done. Okay.
we're going to look at the draft minutes from the regular meeting and then also the bill state. Um, is there any questions from the board? I, have a question. I think my questions, I kind of sort of answered in my own brain, but I'm just going to check. I'm sure you're right. Yes, I know. <laughs> I feel like I read my own part of this one. Uh, 7118, was that part of what's going on here? Yeah, I, I yes, it. yes, okay. Um, and then I was curious. Is the new tough shed also part of what's going on? Like, is that part of the recreation stuff? No, the new tough shed was put out at the maintenance facility into the eastern court. Oh, okay. Uh, and it's being used at storing lawnmowers and chainsaws okay. and okay. Okay. weed whackers and other hand tools like that. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to make them all Yeah. 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 All right. All right. So then, um, can I motion to approve? approve. Okay. Yeah, you know, it's funny because when we had in person meetings in the past, we never did a call anything. It was just simply a, a verbal. It's, vote, uh, and it's a tick now. After three years, <laughs> I mean, three years. I'm like, I'm, I'm at least turning and not looking on the screen. Remote meetings call for roll call votes. Okay. Right, no We're no longer at a remote meeting. Right. So when we have to approve something, we don't do a roll. No. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Anybody abstain? Right. And that's it. But and then, but and then the board president. But I just, I just threw up. I would like to ask public for a comment on things that we only have three minutes. No. Okay. Now we can move on. I will read the public comments. Oh, let's do that. Yeah, motion from Bill. Yes. Yeah, motion from Bill. Right. Yeah. Second from Lisa. All, All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Yeah. Oh, I didn't say yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Wow. Okay. Sorry, everybody. It's an adjustment. All right. So. Can I a quick suggestion? Can we let you White do his report early so the board can get back on the boards? The bridge blows over. I appreciate that. I'm on future consideration for today. Okay. Like, I've been on the road. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. 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 Technically, we are at public comments. Open time for items not on the agenda. Speakers may comment only on non agenda items. This is subject matter of the direction of the district. We did. We did. Yes. Okay. Sure. So we're going to move on to the first draft of the district operating budget of financial year 2023 2024. Mm -hmm. yes. Thank you. Uh, just to be very clear, I mean, this is, as always, this is the time of year, is a very beginning stage budget just for the matter of uh, pure transparency. We want it on every board agenda, typically March, April, up until May when it is adopted. Uh, there will be, uh, I want to say, significant but, uh, several changes, not all of these, but there will be several changes throughout this as we continue to refine. Um, a couple of the things I have done with this budget so far uh, in terms of revenue. Uh, Actually, it's quite easier to talk about what happens. The majority of the ad valorem taxes aren't in there. Uh, rent department is still going through and finalizing their projections for all of uh, summer camp uh, and next year's year, so we will add those in soon. Uh, things like rental service contracts, uh, the CSA 13 and kind of far. Uh, all of those still need to be updated, so they will be as we get farther along here. Um, ideally, by next month, we'll have 8% uh, at the least. Uh, on the expenditure side, we still need to analyze part-time seasonal staff wages, primarily uh, associated with the rec programs, uh, as well as contractors. I'm still waiting on some final information from uh, for our property liability and workers' comp insurance. Uh, I still need to go through and kind of reanalyze uh, all of our utilities, uh, see that we're still trending in the right direction for that. I think right now, PG&E is spiked like mad, so there's going to be some changes there, uh, especially on the gas side. Uh, although I did just hear that they're expecting a 75% decrease next month in gas costs, so, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it would have been nice to have that 75% decrease when we started heating the pool, but it is what it is. Uh, Again, recreation program supply services will really look at capital expenditures. Uh, so for now, all those items are at or during the year, uh, last year's budget, which is actually the current year budget that we're in. So you won't see a lot of changes in that. And then uh, in looking at this budget, I have updated all of the kind of full-time staffing wages and staff-related costs uh, in alignment with what our current pay schedule is for all of those people, as well as any census models that they have steps up coming in the current year. So that has been updated. Uh, and then uh, try to look at what else I have here. Uh, the one thing, as long as we're talking about staff, I know that we've been kind of talking about this and just need to kind of get on it, is uh, really having the board consider and implement a formal process by which salary schedule wages are reviewed on a regular basis for non-represented staff. Obviously, the represented staff have a right to formal negotiations, uh, which we're getting ready to enter the third year of the three-year MOU for, uh, but the district has never really had a process by which to look at or analyze non-represented wages. Uh, so we certainly have some options there. You know, we've broken off, say, in the little ad hoc subcommittee of the board member, too, that would like to meet with myself and would probably ask Luke to join in, uh, and we can kind of look at what types of processes would make sense, um, you know, from comparables to CDI to district financial performance and so on. Uh, and this would be really kind of a good time to be looking at it, considering we have a pretty good idea of where we're going to, how we're going to perform this year, and you would recently have received the audit this year, so you have to sense of where we stand from a balance sheet perspective. Uh, I do have some notes just on things that I did within this budget. Um, I don't uh, feel I need to go through all of them. Uh, a couple things to point out, as it currently stands, I'm still uh, earmarking $100,000 to go towards the district's open trust fund as a uh, allocation every year, as well as $100,000 to go into the board designated reserves every year. That currently sits at $500,000 as of June of last year. And then uh, I just updated some of the stuff that we you know, have in place and that we know, long-term debt, um, things with that. Uh, obviously, Luke and Robin and I need to get together a little bit more on what type of rental revenue opportunities will exist, uh, both for outdoors and uh, for the facility, which wouldn't necessarily be going back to private rentals, but we do have people who run the facility, like church groups and things like that, so we can actually start to incorporate a small line budget for that. Um, and that won't give us the amount of grant here that we're experiencing. Yeah, well, these groups, groups don't really apply much okay. better there. Okay. I mean, they come in and do a little church group on Sunday morning or something, so. Uh, but yes, we wouldn't lose money on that. Okay. Um, I did move some things around on the rec side. Uh, we, you know, if we've been putting in capital, but it's not really capitalizing. Capital, it's not something you capitalize in terms of uh, every year we plan for a budget to do some concrete repair to pool deck. Uh, it's not really a, an item that gets capitalized and appreciated, so I moved it out of that category, moved it into. Um, Land and building maintenance, which is where it seems to make more sense. Mm -hmm. So you'll notice a jump in land and building maintenance, and that's primarily why. Uh, uh, again, I already talked about service contract revenue. That's something that I'll have very good estimates for, but it doesn't actually get finalized until usually September or October, because it's dependent on how uh, actual perform at the end of this year, because that's rolled over into the following year of those contracts. Uh, and then the other thing I want to say is I know I have a bullet point here uh, talking about the Chief Officer uh, Services Agreement with Santa Bell. I actually met with uh, Chief White and Deputy Chief uh, Roman yesterday at a very good meeting. That process is well underway. I think we have some good understandings on where we'll be with that, so I'll be able to kind of budget for that into there too, and that will be moving forward,
the pretty fun process on how we go through and put the budget together. So we'll be sitting down with staff, we'll get all of our capital, we'll get our uh, capital planning done, we kind of review every year at least around this time. Uh, and then Luke and uh, his team will uh, we'll all sit down and go through what they're projecting and looking at as far as summer camps and school year programs. So by the next meeting, we'll see some significant changes. Okay. Um, anybody have any questions? Um, I would say that I agree with you that we should start the process of trying to figure out um, how to do evaluations and all, and, and just in terms of theories and stuff, and I'm happy to be one board member if another board member wants to be on that with you. Um, it's welcome done, but I'm happy to leave you guys and get that over I don't want to stay up there too much. Well, I think it's just important to have a process in place so they're aware of what the process is, how often it happens, uh, uh, what the, the factors are. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily call it an evaluation because I think that's a different right. process right. Uh, entirely, but this is just a matter of looking at what your, what your pay scales yeah. are and uh, ensuring that they're safe and competitive. Yeah. Yeah. That would be different than the structure we already have. Which is? We <laughs> charge <laughs> <laughs> that we did that. incorporate that kind of stuff. So, but what I'm saying is we have a plan process and a plan timing so that we know that, say, every April, we're going to go through that kind of a review okay. and, yeah. and look at it. Or, every, you know, it's every two years or whatever. It's just right now, the process has always been when staff kind of brings it to the board's attention that they were really slipping behind as opposed to having an expectation that we're going to look at this at this time of year. Every year, here's the factors we're going to look against. And it could be market comps um, to comparable positions at similar agencies. It could be CPI factors, um, you know, super price index inflation, um, as well as the district's ability to afford you know, I guess that's what I was saying. But no, I actually thought that process and the information that was brought to the board last time was good. I would, just, I would like to formalize it. Uh, I don't know if it's a, a policy, but certainly a formalized process. The staff are very well aware of okay, they review every year at this time. And, and management staff, you know, looking like itself, would certainly come to uh, with recommendations as well. Okay, we'll stuff Here's a quick question. I know this is like super bad. Um, on page three, capital outlay improvements, the budget, we're budgeting quite a bit more. In 2324, I see no comments for a specific item. Yes, thank you for bringing that yeah. up. So, right now, what you are looking at, uh, and I'm assuming you're talking about 522 So, yes. let's talk about 0916. That is uh, first, which is underneath new equipment. That is primarily the amount that was budgeted this year for the playground renovation. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some other little things that are thrown in there, but that's mostly what that is. And right now, I think that's not going to get completed this fiscal year. Uh, the goal is actually complete that after summer camp and everything ends. Um, so, we'll be done with fun topic um, on the PR agenda this coming month, just in terms of the looking at the data and getting our people together. We'll hopefully get that put out to bid uh, within the next couple of months with a planned building time of September, October. Uh, just so that way, summer camp is done. Um, and that was an item that was discussed. Timing was specifically discussed with PNR um, and staff, and we certainly uh, agree that that is absolutely the best timing by which to do the project. Uh, and Luke did his due diligence in reaching out to multiple vendors just to gain some understanding what lead times needed uh, from the time a contract is awarded to the time you can actually have the equipment. It varies all across the board, but I can get this out by May, early June for a September build, uh, even as late as October will be fine. Uh, now, to answer your question, I'll jump here. Yes, so uh, the one item I did actually add so far in capital outlay uh, that I think is important and really needs to get done is, and we talked about this briefly, uh, for the firehouse bunk room, for those of you who have never been in there, their bunk room is one room with two out beds that come out of the wall. Uh, they all kind of sleep in a dormitory style uh, environment, uh, which is okay. Uh, it's certainly non-compliant uh, even when we hire a female firefighter, and what we're looking at is building in just some uh, uh, non-structural I don't want to call them fake walls, but I mean, those shelves and everything. What's that? Cells. Yeah, well, not cells. They won't be <laughs> But you know, basically, creating three separate three quarters out of that one giant room. So we would remove the murky beds and create almost like little mini bedrooms in there. Uh, that would be, you know, the door and close off a lot of room. That's like what we saw when we went to see that mini bed house event all connected. It would be nothing like what you've seen in the new house. No, but like, but, 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 but
And just for a point of record, it only gives you space to list three people. I was Lisa Bond because she was the president. I listed Lisa because she's the vice president. And Bill was on, from the, last, right. Bill was on from the last time. So I just said we didn't take him on. Because he was already in that same line. It's a different spot. Yeah. Exactly. Congratulations. Okay. So no one has against Kathleen or Chris. Nothing. All right. I guess we are now moving on to the opinions of our guests. Would you like to talk to them? That's all right. Mainly, let's just start with these quick other items of note. The SDR and the Spring Education Day is a free little mini one-day conference that happens in West Sacramento. Um, it's really kind of geared around some of our insurance stuff, some of the geared towards P&L insurance needs or towards work comp insurance needs. But they do offer other full day uh, activities there. One is a safety specialist certificate program. I actually did that about five years ago. Uh, Robin Bruton, uh, who's our assistant director, expressed some interest in doing it, so she's going to join and go through that program and get the certificate, which is good for either two or three years. Uh, and then Lisa, uh, director from Jerry, uh, offered and wanted to come along, and her and I are going to attend the full day uh, governance foundations workshop put on by the Special District Leadership Academy. Uh, beyond good learnings, this actually gives us a lot of different what's known as credit incentive points, which will then be applied as discounts towards both our property liability and our work comp. Insurance. So we'll get just for going to the concert, having multiple staff, having board person, as well as the safety uh, certificate is its own category, gives you more points. So um, this will be a day well spent. Uh, we recently were contacted by the county and their sustainability manager, a woman named Dana Arnino, uh, about an opportunity that's being sponsored through, I believe, it's PGE to convert gas water heaters to all electric water heaters at absolutely zero cost to the district. Uh, I personally think that this is a great idea. The electric water heaters have come a long way. We have three water heaters um, one that hits the bathrooms in the kitchen here, one that's for the pool area, one that's in the firehouse. Unfortunately, um, it's not going to work out for the one that serves this building. Uh, they've already got site, but they can certainly make it work for the pool as well as for the firehouse. This isn't like the little on-demand ones going on walls. It's actually a water tank uh, that comes in, given the price and instability of gas. I think that this is a good move, and again, it costs the district nothing, so it comes with all the same warranties. Okay. The pool itself or the pool bathroom? The pool showers and bathrooms, not the pool itself. Because that would give us too much money, and that would be too much of it. Well, it would be sweet benefits, yeah. and I can, but I am not aware of any actual efficient for uh, well-designed electric heaters for 200,000 gallon pools. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then the other thing I want to mention on that really quick that I don't have here, just yesterday, um, you all might recall, um, a few months ago, uh, I had asked the board to authorize spending so that we could become pool members for a system known as CalOps. Uh, they reached out to me yesterday, said that they have opened it back up and sent me the paperwork, and so we're completely there, and we'll be CalOps members by the end of the month. Which Wonderful. Means. So uh, we'll get all of our, uh, for the one fire position we have remaining, I know Rob's excited to use it for her positions, uh, and it's a great system. So. Did they possibly tell you the money? No. Glad to understand. Yeah, I think their HR director left. I think uh, they have some other things that they expanded to put that secondary piece on hold okay. in terms of bringing in new people while they focus on managing the city because it is run by, a, by the city okay. of Foster City. Okay. Uh, but at the end of the day, I really don't care. I, Chief White can probably speak to this better because I know Santa is a member, but for those who were members, there was no disruption. So for all those agencies that were in, they were still able to keep using it, posting it, and accepting applications for other things. I just I want to get in and then work because it is far away a superior group. Okay, uh, finally, the Mount Lane uh, and Creek Bank failures. Uh, We've still done a lot of work uh, just in terms of like preliminary work and investigations. Uh, we've actually recently had a land surveyor come out. He's already completed a complete survey uh, across the creek, through the creek, all the way up to the pool house building, down to the bridge, everything, elevations, the work. So we have a, a relevant recent topographic survey for that, which is what they need to actually be able to design the repairs. Uh, the, uh, uh, hydrological engineer we brought on, Matt Smelter, has been incredible. He's making sure that we're moving forward with what we need to do. He's already been in touch with the county and the civil engineer, and with uh, North Pacific has certainly been working with it. There's little thing to do until we get that survey done. Um, and even with Matt's work, uh, he really needs the water to come down more. And right now, if you've been out in the creek, it's back up to mid-January uh, levels. So uh, just a quick peek at it today, it's hard to tell, but I don't think there's any adverse movement to, to the land. It's all covered. All the emergency protective measures we've taken have been taken. And I think we're moving as quickly as we can in uh, looking at the repairs. Uh, next steps are on that level are going to be just kind of engaging and contracting with various uh, environmental uh, consultants because we're certainly going to have to have some of the environmental work done on this as well. They're going to have to do field surveys, uh, so on and so forth, but the water levels are just much too high for them to have at this point in time. Uh, all of that said, I did submit what's known as a request for public assistance to FEMA. It, the, the request has been accepted. We have been, uh, the claim has been accepted. The request has been accepted. We've been assigned a representative for FEMA just last week. I attended uh, what turned out to be a four and a half hour applicant briefing um, at the county uh, Emergency Operations Center. Uh, most agencies in Wren County were there. Um, there's uh, Quinn Gardner, who is the Emergency uh, Services Director for the City of Santa Fe, was there. Uh, a lot of the cities and other agencies were there. It was a long day, but it was important. I had a chance to talk to a couple of uh, direct representatives, kind of explain what our situation was. Even had one of them come out to the site afterward, later in the afternoon, uh, from Cal OES, whose job really is to kind of serve as a liaison between the federal aspect of this FEMA and the individual applicants. Uh, and Cal OES is, is very incredibly supportive, and I think they kind of see it as their job to help make sure your claim gets accepted and the funding obligated for it. Uh, we actually have a meeting this Friday with representatives from FEMA and Cal OES. Uh, I'll be attending. I think Luke's going to sit in if he's available. And, uh, Matt Smeltzer, who is uh, working on a lot of the environmental and some of the other work, uh, and could, much, can describe the damage much better than I can, has also said he'll come and join for that meeting too, which is great. The goal of this meeting is really uh, to separate and, and identify the very specific projects that you have that are needed to repair, and then to start to create damage descriptions, which is why I really wanted Matt Smeltzer there, because he can speak much better to the technical bank failures or the geologic uh, activity that happened and everything else. I want to make sure, uh, because the one thing with these processes is once you sign off on what the damage description is, you can't change that. You can change the work needed, you can change everything, but the damage description once it's set, it's set. So I want his input on that to make sure that we are capturing everything possible. Uh, the OES person seemed fairly optimistic that this would be a claim that they would accept, uh, especially given that we had water intrusion coming into the pool pump house and down in the lower pits and everything, so that directly impacted the facility. Um, and that's kind of the biggest part of being accepting this. It's not just something that happened in the natural environment, but no damage to the actual facilities and improvements. Uh, we did have that, not nearly enough to warrant closing down the facility or putting it in a an unsafe condition, but it has to be addressed because another big thing like this happens in that facility is in control. Um, so we will keep you apprised as we go through that. Um, it's going to be a while before we know if FEMA is
Do you have any questions for Eric? Thank you very much for your hard work. Thank you. I have a question. So, um, as you, know, you mentioned, that the application process is now in place with, with FEMA. Now, would they have? Would FEMA have certain vendors that they require us to utilize? No, projects? no. They have a they have a bidding process that they require you to utilize, and it's basically identical to the bidding process we already have, which you know has to go through a formal kind of seal. You know, anything that the law requires, and then you also have to show that it's, it's been offered to minority and women-owned businesses. But by putting it through the agencies that we put it through, no. we take care of that too. So yes, it does have to go through a very specific process, and they want to know what our policy is. And I was telling them that we've actually adopted what's known as CUTCA, the California Uniform uh, Public Construction Cost Act, uh, <coughs> which is where the thresholds are set as to direct informal formal bidding, uh, and this is all going to follow the formal bidding. There's no aspect of this project that's going to fall underneath that 200. Roughly 2,200, 3,300, and 2,400 deaths a day um, for each of those years at the same time each year. So that it shows that 
things were really at a, a very frenzy pace. A lot of folks were at risk. That's no longer the case right now. Um, even though that's maybe nine out of ten Americans, including yours truly, have now experienced COVID at least once. Um, I thought I was perfect to it because I'm almost three years right here, and then suddenly I wasn't. So, uh, wake up call. Um, that being said, um, I believe the federal government is moving sometime, I think May 11th, to actually end their declaration as well. With that, there's going to be some changes with how the um, health maintenance organizations and others are actually addressing bringing forward COVID testing without charge, as an example. Uh, the home kits, all those things will, will start to shift and become something that's not uh, sponsored directly or, or provided for free from the federal or state. Um, so, more to follow on that. Um, I got to say, though, that I, I recall when this was all starting to become an issue before there was actually a real um, shutdown. I saw Governor Newsom and Mayor London Bree take what I thought were really unusual steps to stand up emergency management efforts and, and Office of Emergency Management very early. And I, I was told later by some folks that may or may not really have the inside information that Mayor London Bree received some images and photos of what was taking place in Wuhan, China, and other locations where COVID was running rampant. And they knew that being on the Pacific Rim, that was going to be a potential destination for a lot of folks that were infected with COVID. So they took a very proactive stance. I think that proactive stance certainly reduced the number of deaths we may have confronted, been confronted with here in the state. Add to that, the Super Bowl. Uh, if the Niners had won the Super Bowl against Kansas City that year, the celebration in Silicon Valley, which was a hotbed for COVID initially, would have also been, I think, something very problematic for the state and maybe for the region as a whole. So we just we got very fortunate that um, people took immediate action and some other things where within large gatherings of folks actually did not occur to the scale that they could have. Um, so with that being said, um, I don't know if I'm going to provide very much more on COVID in our, our monthly reports because things have kind of dwindled down. There's not a lot of information being shared at this point. Uh, but I will just say and encourage, much like President Oyserman, um, masking up is not really a bad thing, especially if you're going to be in large crowds. Um, COVID still affect, infecting folks. We've had people still in San Francisco Fire Department, as an example, who are being infected with COVID or have family members infected with COVID. And we just want to do our due diligence that we're going to be around anyone vulnerable to ensure that since vaccination and boosting is not really taking place on the same scale as it was before, that we try to do what we can to protect those individuals, whether they're very young or the elderly. Um, I think that's just a prudent thing to consider. So unless there's some future requests for COVID items, I think we're going to start, like I said, scaling back and eliminating the report. I think that would be a very bad thing. So you will not have an additional new pandemic yes. that you have to give us information on. Uh, I hope that never happens again in the history of humankind. It's just, you know, it's one thing to have happen every 100 years, but this is devastating. I hope we can get ahead of things with the World Health Organization and the others who really study and try to get ahead of these things and when they see them develop, do some immediate intervention and contain it. But um, that also involves world politics and domestic politics and other things we have no control over sometimes. So we'll see. We'll see. Let's hope. Um, celebration of life, services for um, retired and um, ill member Paul Cremins, who worked in the Redwoods for several years before moving over to the Central Hill Fire Department. Um, Chief Cremins was well regarded and well respected by everyone, uh, including me. I didn't really have the opportunity to, to know Chief Kern to work alongside him, but he was one of the first people to reach out to me when I joined the San Francisco Redwood Fire Department. So I was very surprised to learn about this fight and how he took the time to reach out to me while he was facing a very great disease and surgeries and everything else. But that was the kind of individual he was. He was very, um, how can I put it, compassionate, energetic, optimistic, optimistic on the scale that I've only seen maybe a couple of other, other people. Um, I mean, you can see from his text messages, he was not getting down on himself despite what his reality was. And so he just he taught me some valuable lessons that um, only my father, who had passed from cancer when I was about 30 years old, taught me watching him as he went through a, a disease that was slow progressing. And so I just um, I learned a lot from Paul Kern in a short period of time. I had the, the opportunity to go visit with him, and I told him, I said, if I'm lucky enough to get to where you are, we're going to have some more conversations and keep this friendship going. So I meant by that, I'm assuming he's heading that way. <laughs> so given that, I'm hoping I'm arriving somewhere in that same direction. But we'll be here going. That's what I hope. <laughs> so given that, um, it was a great ceremony that was held here at the Runway Community um, Center about, excuse me, uh, around noon on uh, February 20th. And well, that's going to be at least 200 to 200, 300 people over there, including state assembly members and colleagues, um, uh, members from the community, members from um, retirees, active members, and we had Marine County uh, fire chiefs and their agencies all agreed to help covering for us so we could all be here to participate um, on duty or off duty. And so it was just well attended, and special thanks to John Bagelow, who has a lot of history here, Jeff Conover, um, Kenny Martin, uh, Ryan Brackett, Eric, who assisted um, the time chief, uh, Kyle Hamilton, and others who really made this a memorable event. And uh, I hope the family received it well. I think they did. Um, but just to see the, the folks in attendance and hear stories from his family was very touching. We learned even more about Paul than I didn't know. Like, he was a martial artist. You know, he was a very quiet, slight, unassuming guy. He could probably get behind and take names if he had to. We would have never known that without him, right? <laughs> so, um, so given that, I just want to again acknowledge that we were able to have a, a very great send off for Chief Rennes. And then last but not least, you know the routine, you know what I say every month, our members will come in sub six minutes, as usual, and that's just a testament to their willingness to know their districts, get out to work quickly, and get on scene to provide the help that they're able to provide to anyone in need. And so uh, I continue to just marvel at this, and they set the standard for others. Um, I told you, you know, many times I've seen numbers that far surpass this, and it's, it's, it's problematic, it is. But it's for different reasons, and we try to correct our course of regular individuals who haven't really landed in the right with the mindset of getting out of the door, getting on the radio, getting the route, and how important that is. Um, so I'm, I'm considered a dinosaur in the fire service, but I think some of those old traditions and that old understanding is still needed for you, and I'm going to continue to emphasize and press those things. And if they start slipping, I'll be right there to catch them in the right direction. But so far, so good. They're self-motivated. They can take care of business. So we're proud of the 158 crews here. And that concludes my report. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And thank you, Scott, for being here and for coming out. Um, I really didn't do much of anything. I would certainly well, for Paul, for Paul, I'm sure there's almost regular events. I was deflecting. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Scott. I got COVID. Oh, no. I am not going to be here, but I wanted to just say our thanks to the board, to some of you who have I heard that car ran into a building and the fire department had to shut down the street. Is that true? When was that? I don't know. I did last week. Uh, I did hear that, um, okay. but it's possible that it did occur. Okay. I'll tell you what I'll do it, or I would do it if I was an incident commander. It all really depends on whether or not there was a structural integrity issue with yep. the building, or if there was a power line or something else that was a real issue. I mean, if we do uh, thoroughfare, thoroughfare traffic would be a problem, then we would probably be around traffic until we could secure the power and or ensure the integrity of the building. It was around an A. Okay. Yeah, I didn't hear about that incident, but I'll be honest. Actually, that, that, that actually funnels to the de
And is recording off? Okay. Okay. Uh, that was uh, construction. That was Friday. No. Okay. Well, we can talk about something else. No, you can't ask that question. <laughs> 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 if you like, you don't have to get back in the car. You can hang out. But otherwise, you know, if you don't want to get back in the car yet, you can hang out with us. But otherwise, we'll see you. Uh, you know, my son's been texting me. I want to say goodnight to him. Yeah, go, go, go. Yeah, thank you. 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 Did you want to say something? Yeah, I, I would just ask that. I met with Angela. Um, she actually came to the parole from another one of the party recommendations. She's been a resident, um, born and raised for the most part, and had moved out for a brief period of time, and has back in with her family, but was uh, locally here. Uh, certainly seems to understand what the role was about with the commission and student, and uh, was excited to get involved. She was uh, a little disappointed in that the next commission meeting is scheduled for March 28th, and she already has a plan. Uh, out of town, so she won't be able to sit until May, uh, but she did submit her letters included in the packet, uh, and I think she'll be a fine commission. I agree. Can I have one mm -hmm. Can I make a motion? Can I make a motion? May I make a motion to approve Angela Sorry. Blissteiner? Um, to join the Park and Rec Commission. Uh, thank you. Okay. okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, I can give a, a brief staff report on this. I uh, just want to be very clear that this doesn't commit the district to the project at all, uh, but you can't move forward in this project in any shape from where we are now without going through these sites. Yeah. Uh, you know, no, sure. uh, yeah, this is just a, uh, these are the environmental studies, these are things that we have to do um, based on people who know more about this than I do. Um, we think that these are actually going to turn up with no real findings and no impacts with no even that we want to build, but if we have an independent person who goes through and do the assessments, uh, these numbers come from actual um, uh, proposals that I received, uh, and cultural all this you know, spent for the cultural assessment when we had to do that for the uh, maintenance facility. But all that needs to go through, and if there are no uh, impacts, uh, large or small, nothing that requires any level of mitigation, then we'll be able to file a notice, notice of exemption on this project from CEQA, saying that there are no environmental impacts identified, and use those studies as back and forth. Yeah. Any other questions? So no matter what happens, these need to be done regardless. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, of course it's going to come up, because it's been enough already, so. Well, I would be going to start to do public outreach. The findings from these surveys would certainly be incorporated into that public communication, uh, because those would also be some of the questions, you know, are they going to disturb plant life? Is it going to disturb any wildlife patterns or mm -hmm. So that's what these studies tell you. Um, at this point, there's nowhere else to move forward on this project. But one thing I will say, especially with the botanical assessment, is typically springtime is when you want to be doing those, because that's when plants start to come in bloom, and that's when they would want to perform that assessment so that they can give you an accurate representation of the different species in the area where we're planning for this trip. Uh, in total, you're looking at about $6,500 or $8,000 to have the, uh, have the studies produced with written reports. So, I, I just would love to find out what the cultural study would be consisting of. Like what the study looks for? Yeah. They look for a few different things. One is they'll actually go through databases, um, where you don't quote me on what the other Native American Heritage Database, which actually has a lot of sites plotted and knows where there's various shell mounds or artifacts that are found or things like that. We actually have a very significant site right here on North Creek, uh, right next to the thing that's a minute that was discovered. It's all fenced off there. They're, they don't uh, promote it, they don't publicize it because they don't want anybody here, to be honest with you. Uh, but they'll go through those databases and then they'll come out and they'll physically explore the area too. They're the funding evidence. And the same thing that they do for the maintenance facility, but they'll traverse the whole track of where we're at and they'll look into all the databases and it's really available to them. The wildlife assessment, I'm just clarifying, would look at uh, wildlife travel patterns, you know, like corridors or things like that to make sure that we're not cutting anything off. Correct. Okay. Yep. Nesting birds, things along those lines. Right. Yeah. There's a lot back there. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm thinking larger mammals moving from one side, yeah. one place to the other. Two yeah. yeah. There's a beautiful deer back there. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. And is there a reason why we're moving forward when we're not 100% sure we're going to do this trail, or, and we have the big project not knowing if it's going to approve? Uh, mostly on this right now is timing. If this isn't done now, you're going to push it out a year. Uh, because yes, we need to do the botanical around this time of year coming up shortly. And uh, the project has got 150,000 seed money already into it for looking for any other grants. Uh, I would personally, my recommendation is to move forward with this, allow this to help inform any final decisions as to whether this is a go, go, go beyond just a financial or maintenance look, but also are there any environmental impacts. And if you might come back saying massive environmental impacts, at which point it's going to make this important. Right. Uh, I don't think they will, but I'm not biologist. Well, and then, as we know now, versus next year, let's say we decide we definitely want to move forward. And we missed the window. We would have to wait another year. And as you know, it costs a lot of year. So. Well, I don't think we could ever make a decision about even wanting to move forward or not. Yeah. Well, let's say you would need. Let's say next next April we decided we did want to move forward, but I'm not sure we would be in time to get those right. things done. So we need to set up. Sorry. I don't know if we need to book ahead of time or what. So just by approving now, it means not necessarily that it's going to be done at this instant, but it's going to be done. We'll get information. We can sit on information and adjust it and figure out if it's going to work for us. Right. I mean, instead we don't have an expiration date, so it might be set now. And then yeah, there's certain other things that even prior to construction you still need to do. Like you need to do things like nesting bird surveys if you're doing construction during nesting service season, which is relatively cheap and easy. You know, people who are certified come out, they, they look for nesting and things like that, of a, especially any protected species, spotted owls, and all those things. So you still got to do that, but that's not, that's not what this is. That is a time and place survey versus an overall assessment. Okay, and I've been there, and I haven't asked for public comment, even though we can hear the public, but I do need to ask, and I can go down and do that for Chief. Right, um, is there. Um, I would move that we uh, approve the authorization to engage in any consultants before required biological and cultural studies for the Olymp
Um, thank you. Yeah, so um, maybe this week we opened up summer camp registration and one last thing registration for regular residents yesterday. And we opened up for uh, common residents for the rest of the public on Thursday this week. So uh, that's gone really well. We had um, coming in, it's hard to know, we're going to have a line out the door and how we're going to work. But um, uh, staff, thankfully, uh, we're very thorough going through everything to make sure all of our registration links were working, all the information was correct, and everyone was, was going to be okay. And it was a relatively uh, mild day in terms of uh, staff needing to interact with, with the public. So people are being online, get their camps, get their swim lessons, and it all went very smoothly. Um, even though uh, Carolyn's computer decided to do a massive update um, <laughs> an hour before and said, I, we'll restart several times this morning. It was about 98% yeah, yeah. done, but we opened up. So I really great. And um, uh, the, the big days, for example, when the whole the rest of the world uh, comes in and tries to get it. So, um, so far, it's going strong, and uh, everyone was really solid uh, compared to previous years of the resident uh, like that. So we're encouraged by that, and we're expecting to be uh, really registration um, the next couple of weeks and months. So uh, but that, that's what we're looking for. So uh, next week, we've had a lot of my full membership signing up for some lessons, enrolling in our CIP program, uh, our cards and training program. And, uh, so, yeah, I'll ask the board. What are those do? Uh, the uh, CIP applications are, are not due until um, the end of April. So, I've got a lot of time. And can I just ask a general question on the administration? Yeah. Because you split it, do you hold, does any camp sell out or just numbered or just? Not historically and not so far. Yeah. Okay. Um, so okay. there are there are some groups like the the age group um, kindergarten through like second grade tends to be the most popular uh, demographic for camps and we have a lot of options for those, for those camps. Um, second nice. so right now second grade second grade camps are, are, the, are the most popular this first couple days, but not so. Okay. There will be stuff uh, those first day. It was only during COVID when we were doing a little bit of tens of what we right? Right. Yeah. Uh, things are going back up to normal. You know, last year and this year. Uh, the last, um, last, I guess it was a week, uh, week and a half ago, was our own 12 annual Ways of Glass uh, wine tasting event, uh, and um, it was on Saturday, March 4th. Uh, it was a great time. We had 14 wineries uh, from Sonoma, Napa, and Marin uh, doing wine tasting. We had a new, new band performing some live music, which was, uh, which was really good. And uh, it was a great now, a really good event. We're really excited about it. Our next uh, community event will be our Spring Art Show, which takes place on April 22nd, Saturday from uh, 3 to 7. So we'll be looking that. Um, we have a lot of good artwork and sort of that, especially a lot of fun. The pool opened for the Marine Water Devils on March 1st uh, for their Slash Week, kind of a week for new, uh, new swimmers to check out. And, and the pool team was on Friday, that week? Pool team did a pool party on Friday. Pool party on Friday, and regular practice uh, started this week. And um, with. Uh, <laughs> I guess regular practice was last, last week. Last week, and then, yeah, last week, and then we got uh, a second week of the second practice, and we had a couple cancellations. Yeah, so we'll 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 start, we'll yeah, with a false start of the weather. Uh, probably last week was off to a great start as far as performing. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great team. That's a great team, the swimmers, and then have the coaches back on the deck. And the stars are the thrill of the pool. Yeah. The stars are the thrill of the pool. Oh, yeah. The temperature of the clarity. Yeah, I think something's not running, and it's going to be cut. Yeah, we'll be cutting the general public on Monday, April 3rd. So um, we've got a few more things to do down there, but we're all working to see the swim team back up um, back in the facility. It's going to go great. Um, and there's one note, we mentioned the, the slide, as Eric talked about in the report. Um, um, we are optimistic that we'll, the area that's been compromised back behind the pumphouse and behind our area um, will, as of now, not affect any of our operations or our rentals or ability to, to run the pool season as, as normal. We lose some real estate back there in some areas that are definitely going to keep an eye on. Things, you know, things could change during this weather, but, um, but as right now, our plan going forward for the pool season, um, we'll do everything uh, normally. The only thing that's a question is looking at when the construction does begin later, um, most likely in the summer, you know, we will need to make accommodations for, for how long the grass is going to take place. So um, that's the only point that the top programs are really what we're doing. But, um, so we're obviously about that. Uh, that, that you know, and, um, and then uh, one thing, so we have some new spring classes start in the last couple of weeks that have been going really well. We do watercolor painting uh, class for adults. We've got a, a new martial arts style class uh, for kids called White Crane Salat, which is nice in the Kung Fu family of, um, of martial arts uh, programs. It's actually a lot of moments going really well. Uh, but one sad note, uh, one of our longtime uh, instructors, Duncan McSwain, taught a photography class for us for, um, I think, since 2014. I'll double check when that was going to He passed away in February, on February 18th. Um, and uh, he's, I think, 80, 87 or 88. And, um, but he, he uh, taught a photography class for us, I think, twice a year um, for the last eight or nine years, and was a, a wonderful instructor and a good friend of the recreation department. So, uh, so we're really excited about his loss, and we'll definitely miss him and miss his program. Um, but um, he's, uh, they've been a really, really uh, nice uh, obituary in the room in IJ, so he's got a fascinating life story that I knew very little of, and he's one of the things I wish he didn't talk about that stuff. But, uh, um, but yeah, I think a lot of fun things I, I shared with his daughter in there, and they're potentially going to do a service for him here. Um, that hasn't been announced yet, but um, as soon as we know, we'll, we'll reach out. But um, later this spring. But I was looking for a photography class uh, to offer. That'd be a cool thing for the community and the people like. And I reached out to a few different avenues to try to find someone to come teach. Him. I hadn't uh, gotten any traction. And then completely unrelated to that, uh, I mean, came in and uh, asked to talk to whoever's in charge of, of classes. And he said, I'd like to offer a photography class to your community. And I said, that's great. And did you see my, my ad? I don't know what you're talking about. I just almost happened to say things that you all seen. I um, ran a great class every spring fall for, for all those years. So I'm looking at a good, good friend and really miss him. So just wanted to, to know that. And um, we'll, we'll definitely um, you know, uh, chase that one service time and try to make it for sure. But the other classes are all working really well. And we're thinking about, um, about our spring offering of, of adult and youth programs. Um, and then we have this week's game right in summer, right the pool season. Robin and John Paul have been conducting um, just countless interviews for seasonal staff and getting all that put together and doing a lot of preparation, scheduling, and planning. And uh, we're really excited for uh, both the, the pool season as well as the, the summer camp season. So um, that's what's on for the rec department. The parts department, uh, he's been wet. And uh, I didn't know uh, <laughs> today. Uh, as a month, he's like, I don't think I've ever, I've ever been so wet as I was today. Or maybe just coming back up sideways. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so we're now monitoring the, um, the districts, the, the culverts, and um, the creek, the, the roof, the facilities. Um, we had uh, two different down trees we handled in the last few days. One uh, fell in the creek over, actually, over the, the bridge, uh, the North Creek, uh, that, that blocked that. And thankfully, didn't do any, any damage, structural damage, just like one little post on the bridge had to um, be replaced. But um, they had to cut that off and then there was a tree down on the Holland Trail, blocking the trail that they dealt with yesterday. Um
with the storms. Um, you know, nothing would, you know, but uh, but stuff kind of monitoring all the different areas and the, the trail and things and the different things that come up. Um, we continue to provide same sandbags for the public out in the parking lot, um, and the, we have one of the days that that we had clear weather now to do some erosion control in some of the spots that we've been over the last few years. Um, primarily, uh, there's an area down near the main park uh, where we've seen some erosion. There's an area over here, uh, it's just kind of north of the playground, and then the, um, uh, the area by the top pool that we've been focusing on in the last couple of years and continue to focus on. Um, those areas so far are pretty okay, and the efforts that we put in that seem to be helping um, if we continue to get these atmospheric rivers and storms, uh, kind of tell you know, what things look like after that. But as right now, it looks like uh, the efforts have been fruitful, and we continue to monitor and work on those kind of labs. Um, and, uh, Staff also busy trying to get the pool for the pool season. Uh, we had some concrete repairs performed last month. Um, we've got some drains in the pool that are due to be replaced uh, this month, that should be the next couple weeks, um, which our staff has been pumping some of the entire group of examiners to put some new drains in. It's not a big deal. Um, but every five years, we have to replace some of those. And so, um, they took some of the tables and benches out of the shop to, to a stand and to refinish, and so we'll be looking to do for the pool season. Um, and uh, should be covered with this as we go. So, um, that's all I wanted to really uh, touch on. Please let me know if there's any questions about the rec or parking. Something to say that they took benches and picnic tables into our new facility and they are able to do it while we're having an atmospheric river outside because previously they did not have room to do these sorts of things. Exactly it was right. not raining. Yeah, no, it's been great to have space actually working and, and you know, do, do things while it's raining out, stay dry and warm. Yeah, so that's actually been a, um, a really nice blessing. So, yeah, exactly. Sorry, yeah, I haven't had it back. He's got to like sneak it in there. I was like, wait, wait, wait. No, it's worth, uh, it's worth noting. I, I just had to, to build down on that. Yeah, it has been um, really wonderful to have a facility to be working in. It's, it's dry, it's heat, it's well lit. I can park the vehicles in and not going onto a soaking wet, you know, utility vehicle every morning that's saturated the night before. And, uh, and the gear is, is going to be in much better condition uh, moving forward. We'll be housed under, under cover and, and uh, in the area. So it's been a really nice time. We have a rainy season um, and having moved in before it all started. It's really nice. Is there any update on the removal of the? Um like uh, shipping containers and fencing and stuff like that. Yeah, so um, we yeah, we have uh, been working on uh, finding buyers for those containers, and um, I believe we do have uh, some interested parties in those. I'm not going to we'll have those out of there with, like, in the next month, mm-hmm. possibly hopefully sooner, but that's um, uh, just make sure we get that blocking and we transport them. That's going to be contribute scheduling and we'll to move the equipment that big. And, uh, and I definitely will not want to do that uh, in the condition of the, the parking, just how it is, because it's super heavy, but um, we'll, we'll make sure that, that we already have charges on that and we have some people. So I'm just using the containers out of there and the fencing down and start rebuilding the area of the park, I think, in the next month or so. Okay. I'll definitely get there. Yeah, I was talking to somebody at the Marine Builders uh, Association to see if they could help to potentially just let their members know that they can get these two kind of advice that you know, they're perfect for courtyards and things like that. Okay, cool. Yeah. But you always have people, oh yeah, I definitely like interested in that. I'm all up with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not. Right. <laughs> they're coming to a few of the conversations. Yes. Yeah. But no, that's, that's a better. Cool. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank you and your staff. Yeah.